This is the new Tony G 9XR radio. It's uh, for its price, it's a very good radio. Uh, but there have been a number of design decisions made that kind of uh, begs for rectifying. And one of them is the placement of the battery connector and the choice of battery. I'll show you today how to make an adapter that makes the battery connection more secure and makes it possible to use a two cell battery rather than the standard three cell battery which is kind of overkill for this radio you normally absolutely do not need a three cell battery in it okay we'll turn the radio around and we'll take a look at the connector as you can see I've turned the radio over and here you can clearly see the battery connection uh, the choice of uh, battery connection is very unusual and it's it's not a good uh, bad sorry <laughs> it's not a bad idea because this will take any standard three cell lipo you have and probably you will have a lot of them if you're flying electric which most people seem to be doing these days so you will never run out of power si since you don't need a special battery you will probably have something else if you forget to load your transmitter battery that is good. Uh, what is not so good is that 3 cell is a bit overkill. You could do with 2 cell for this uh, radio. You don't really need a 3 cell. Uh, another thing that isn't all that good is I'll show you what happens. Okay, this is a 3 cell battery that I plug in like that. This is a very standard 2200 milliamp. As you can see, you can have a much larger battery than this. Okay, the cables here, they end up stretched and very close to the lid that goes on like this. Rather more than close, it's absolutely against the lid. And each time you close it, you might end up pinching it and hurting these cables, which is not a good idea. If you're unlucky, you might end up in a situation where you break a cable and discover that in mid-air somewhere. Not a good idea. So what we're going to do is an adapter that allows you to have both protecting over the cables here and you don't have to remove it each and every time you want to remove the battery. You can leave it in place and then inspect this adapter and replace it when it kind of looks frayed or something. As you can see, this tubing holds the wires more in place, makes it easier to put the lid on and will probably make the contact last longer. These are all the parts you need for the adapter. This is a piece of shrink tube. This is an old lead from a 3S battery, a balance lead, that I kind of saved because I'm cheap. I guess you could buy it too, but I just take them off all batteries. In the hope of building new ones, I guess, which I I'll never do. And this is the only part that I actually have to get. This is the small contact for a 2S battery. We will start out by preparing the balance lead. Uh, power is only coming from these two wires, the utmost ones. Uh, and so we don't really need these ones. So I'll just cut, cut them off. Okay. And I've cut them very close here because there will be live current on here and we don't want to be able to short anything. This is nice and secure, it will be uh, under shrink wrapping. Okay, the next thing I'll do is to make, I think that length is about right, so I'll just cut it there. Okay, now we strip off the ends. This is why you need a wire stripper. You could also do it with your thumb 
if you got good nails. Like that. So, prepared. What we want to do is to solder that line there and that line there. And of course you need some tools. You need a soldering iron, a wire stripper and a wire cutter and some soldering iron, solder like that one. As you can see I'm using one of these helping hand vice vices. I rarely use these but it kind of comes in handy at times like this. Okay, so wrong. And hmm. forgot to thin the contact. And two. Okay, that should hold. As a safety precaution I will be removing the mid contact here so that if you push things together you can never connect to battery poles. I've cut a piece of heat shrink that should fit the job nicely. So let's put the wire inside the heat shrink like that. And I usually let the heat shrink go over the ends and then cut them, otherwise it will shrink uneven. I usually use the soldering iron to kind of give the heat shrink a grip like that. And then I'll use something hotter, a hot air gun to kind of shrink it down to size. But if you haven't got a hot air gun you can use the soldering iron all around here. Before the heat shrink tube goes cold, I will bend the wire this way, like that. And the reason I won't know how to bend it this way is that the small tabs are here. That will, so this is the way it will be inserted. I'll hold it like this until it's all cold. I'm now cut off the excess shrink tube and as you can see you have a nice uh, protective layer on top of the cables. So let's go ahead and plug the adapter in. Okay, there it goes. And uh, now I can get and connect my two cell battery. Like this. Or, of course, like that. Like that. And as you can see, it will fit rather nicely. And that bend there is protected. Okay. Now comes the lid. Like that. Okay, let's turn it on and see if it works. As you can see it went right to on and uh, the display shows 7.9 volt which is okay for a two cell battery. I actually used this radio with this battery this afternoon and it worked great, no problems. And that's all for today.